In this video, I'll talk about unbalanced delta systems. It's really just a quick overview, a couple of things to remember, you know, when you have unbalanced delta. So, you know, what I'm showing to the right here, so a little sketch, so you have a delta system, you know, <clears throat> ABC. So we're gonna assume the impedance ZAB is not the same, is different from ZBC, ZCA. Basically, the delta has different impedances. So we know, since it's a delta, you know, the line where the voltages will sum up to zero, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, even if you have unbalanced conditions. And also we know for delta, the line voltage and the phase voltage are the same because if you go from A to B, so that's line to line, but it, it also happens to, to be the phase voltage. And the phase voltage IAB is just VAB divided by ZAB, so the same thing for BC and CA. So if you do KCL at nodes one, two, three, you know, assuming Current is flowing this way, it is flowing this direction, this direction, that direction. <clears throat> so the line current IA is equal to phase current IAB minus ICA. So IA is entering node one, IAB is exiting, and I. CA is also entering. So you do the same thing for IB, IC. So basically you get these three equations. So for unbalanced delta connected load, loads, you can compute the phase currents and then apply KCL to the nodes to obtain the three line currents. So what we will see through an example, the line currents, what I mean by line currents, are the these currents here IA, IB, IC before they get into the delta. So what you will see under unbalanced situations, you will have unbal uh, unequal magnitudes and the phasers will be will not be displaced by 120 degrees like they do when you have balanced conditions. So here's a simple example. So we have a three phase three wire, 480 volt AB, ABC phase sequence system, delta connected load, and here's ZAB 20 ohms with an angle of zero degrees, ZBC is uh, 20 ohms with an angle of 20 degrees, and ZCA is 10 ohms with an angle of negative 20 ohms. So when I calculate the line currents, IA, IB, IC, then draw the phasor diagram. So again, from the previous slide here, so IAB, basically the current in the delta is just VAB voltage across or from, from A to B divided by ZAB. So if I plug in the numbers, <clears throat> you know, and I said here 480 volt ABC, that means if VAB is here, so counter, if I assume counterclockwise, which is a, a positive sequence, VAB will be here, VBC would be here. So that's negative 20 degrees and VCA would be here. So that's what ABC phase sequence means. And that's why I put, so I'm assuming VAB is my reference, so I put at zero degrees. So 480 divided by 20 is 24 with an angle of zero degrees. So that's in amps. Then IBC is VBC divided by ZBC. So again, uh, VBC lags VAB by 120 degrees. So that's why you see negative 120 degrees here. So 480 with an angle of negative 120 degrees divided by 20 with an angle of 20 degrees. So I get 
24 amps with an angle of 140 or negative 140 degrees. So ICA is VCA divided by ZCA. Uh, again, VCA leads actually VAB by 120 degrees. So that's what you see here. So, so I get 48 amps with an angle of 140 degrees. So now if I apply KCL like I did here, or basically just use this, these equations, I can calculate the line currents from the phase current. So IA is IB minus ICA. So if I plug in the numbers and carry out the calculation, I get 68.15 amps with an angle of negative 26.92 degrees ib ib is ibc minus iab i plug in the numbers so i get 45.11 amps with an angle of negative 160 degrees so i ic is ica minus ibc i plug in the numbers i get 49.79 amps with an angle of 111 point six seven degrees so we clearly see the magnitudes are not equal you know for the line currents and the angles are not are not displaced by 120 degrees so that's because we have unbalanced situation so now let's assume ia is the reference so IA, and I'm not going to draw it to scale just for, so I'm going to draw this is IA. So I'm assuming I, uh, ABC positive sequence, so counterclockwise rotation. So IA, so if I move in this direction, it's positive. If I move in the opposite direction, I have to introduce a negative sign for the angle. So so this is uh, 68.15 magnitudes. Or actually, since I, IA is not zero, let's just to avoid any confusion, let's, let me do something different. So here is my reference. So this is zero degrees. So I'm gonna go, so again, if I go in counterclockwise, that's positive. If I go the opposite, it's negative. So, I, so I'm so i gonna start somewhere here. So here's my point of connection. IA has an angle of negative 26, so it's somewhere here, give and take. So again, it's not to scale, so IA, because I went in the opposite direction, so that's negative 26, point nine two degrees and again it's not going to be to scale so ib so the angle is a hundred sixty degrees in the opposite direction so again from the reference i know this is 90 degrees so 160 would be so I had 90, so 90 from here to here. So I need 70 to get 160. So, so somewhere here. And the angle is, uh, sorry, the magnitude is 45. So 45 is smaller than 68. So I'm just gonna draw something just like that. So IB, and again, the angle here is negative 160 degrees and i see is 111.67 degrees so so i'm going to go in the positive direction so from the reference point this is 90 degrees so 90 plus so i need the 11 so that's 21 so probably he, somewhere here so 49 just slightly bigger than ib Again, they are not to scale. So, so from the reference point to here, it's 111. I'm, I'm just eyeballing it, so. 
but that's the process, you know. So you clearly see that. Uh, so if you draw them kind of to scale, they will be very clear that they're not uh, symmetrical. But we can see from the magnitudes here, if you compare the magnitudes, they are not equal. And if you take the angles, they're definitely not displaced by 120 degrees. Thank you and have a great day.